In the mid-1900s, deep within the archives of the American Central Intelligence Agency, known worldwide as the CIA, lay hidden a classified document which mentions a country whose name has become but a myth. The mere mention of Tartaria invites a kaleidoscope of perspectives. Some theorists suggest a civilization harnessing free energy, a secret guarded by the hands of power, a realm where ancient Tartarians harness boundless energy concealed from the world for generations. Yet skepticism still echoes. Free energy from a lost civilization, a fantastical conspiracy, or a concealed truth. For some, Tartaria remains elusive, a phantom civilization absent from historical records. But what if Tartaria transcends myth? Some propose it as the medieval name for the Mongol Empire, a reinterpretation that adds a new layer to our understanding of a bygone era, challenging the annals of history and accepted academia. However, one thing can be certain. Tartaria was clearly mentioned in this CIA document. This document, titled National Cultural Development Under Communism, was first published in June of 1957 and was immediately classified. It was approved for release on the 24th of August, 1999. It starts with a proclamation issued on the 7th of December, 1917 by the Bolsheviks. It reads, Muslims of Russia, Tartars of the Volga and the Crimea, Kyrgyz and Sarts of Siberia and Turkestan, Turks and Tatars of Transcaucasia, Chechens and mountain peoples of the Caucasus, and all you whose mosques and prayer houses have been destroyed, whose beliefs and customs have been trampled upon by the Tsars and the oppressors of Russia. Henceforth, your beliefs and customs, your national and cultural institutions are forever free and inviolate. Organize your national life in complete freedom. This is your right. The Bolsheviks had realized that if their revolution was to be a complete success, and if they were to be able to consolidate their newly won power, the support of Russia's minority peoples, including the Muslims, was essential. As well as this, Lenin and Stalin promised equality and sovereignty of all nations of Russia, the right of nations to free self-determination, including the right to secede and form independent states, abolition of all national and national religious privileges and restrictions whatsoever, and freedom of development for the national minorities and ethnographic groups inhabiting the territory of Russia. Unfortunately, for the many peoples of Russia, they had no idea just how little the Bolshevik promises actually meant. This document further alludes to the many ways in which the communists then suppressed the Muslims and other minorities and minority religious groups within Russia. The history of the communists during the 40 years they have been in power in the Soviet Union shows that self-determination has not been the only subject on which they've betrayed both their promises and their alleged doctrine. In the Muslim regions of Russia, Islam was the hearthstone around which the life of its devotees revolved, or rather, did revolve, until the communists violated their promises and made it impossible for Muslims to perform their religious duties. As we have seen, the November 1917 proclamation promised Muslims that they would be free to continue in practice of their faith. A decree on the separation of church from state issued on the 5th of February 1918 declared in Article 3 that every citizen may profess any religion or none. In Article 5 that free practice of religious rights is guaranteed. And in Article 9 that citizens may teach and study religion privately. Once the communists had consolidated their power, they began to reveal their true nature, to violate their earlier promises and to take repressive acts. Lands belonging to mosques were confiscated by a decree in 1918. Muslim religious brotherhoods were outlawed during the period 1921 to 1922. And a campaign was launched to ridicule Islam and to undermine the influence of the spiritual leaders of the Muslim people. In 1929, measures were enacted that made the active religious life of Islamic worshippers virtually impossible. Islamic leadership was eliminated by the arrest and deportation, if not liquidation, of almost all persons enjoying any religious status. Nearly all village and most city mosques were closed. Religious literature was suppressed through the changing of alphabets, the confiscation of existing religious texts including the Quran and the suppression of all publications of a religious nature, and anyone in a responsible position was dismissed if known to be a pious and practicing Muslim. Muslims were to be free to practice their beliefs and customs. That was the Bolshevik promise. 
In 1917, when the communists came to power, there were 7,000 mosques in European Russia alone, in addition to the unnumbered thousands in Muslim Central Asia, the Caucasus and Transcaucasia, as well as the Crimea. But in 1942, the communists themselves admitted that there were then only 1,312 mosques in the whole of the Soviet Union. The others had been confiscated and converted into warehouses or stores or otherwise desecrated or allowed to fall into ruin. In Tashkent, for example, where once 300 mosques graced the city before the communists came to power, there were only 20 left. Samarkand, which formerly had over 100 and was the seat of Tamerlane's Tartarian Empire, had only 17 left, of which only one was permitted to be used. Bukhara, an independent Tartarian city which once boasted of 360 mosques, was also reduced to just one. al Marata, a Muslim town for centuries and the capital of the Muslim Republic of Kazakhstan, had not left one single mosque, nor any to be found in large Muslim centres such as Krasnovodsk, Ashgabat or Stalinabad. The fact was that the communists condemned and therefore prevented the publication of all Muslim literary works except those few which extol the virtues of Russia and the Russians. The document then goes on to mention Tartaria. Or, let us take the matter of history, which along with religion, language and literature, constitute the core of a people's cultural heritage. Here again, the communists have interfered in a shameless manner. For example, on the 9th of August 1944, the Central Committee of the Communist Party, sitting in Moscow, issued a directive ordering the party's Tatar Provincial Committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of Tartaria, to liquidate serious shortcomings and mistakes of a nationalistic character committed by individual writers and historians in dealing with Tartar history. In other words, Tartar history was to be rewritten, let us be frank, was to be falsified, in order to eliminate references to great Russian aggressions and to hide the facts of the real course of Tartar-Russian relations. And this was no isolated case. In every Muslim area within the USSR, historians, on orders of the Communist Party, have rewritten history to distort the facts so that the Russians appear always in a good light. Needless to say, histories which present the facts truthfully have been withdrawn and destroyed, so that the present and future generations of Muslims are forever denied the chance of learning the true facts of their nation's past. So in this document, the writer, discussing historical events, has expressed concern about the interference of communists, particularly the Communist Party in the USSR, in shaping the narrative of history. The writer cites a specific instance in 1944 when the Communist Party directed a revision of Tartarian history to eliminate references to Russian aggression, suggesting a deliberate falsification of historical facts. The writer contends that this manipulation of history extends beyond Tartaria to all Muslim areas within the USSR with the intent to portray Russians favorably. Additionally, the writer notes that truthful historical accounts have been withdrawn and destroyed, preventing present and future generations of Muslims and Tatars alike from learning the genuine facts about their nation's past. It is also extremely important to note how vital such a document like this is to be naming Tartaria as a country in the 1950s. The speaker highlights a pattern of interference by the Communist Party and the Russians in shaping the historical narrative, particularly in Muslim and Tatar areas within the USSR. The directive to revise Tartarian history and eliminate references to Russian aggression suggests a deliberate effort to manipulate historical facts. The broader assertion is that this trend extends beyond Tartaria, with historians rewriting history to portray Russians in a positive manner. This document emphasizes the removal and destruction of truthful historical accounts, denying present and future generations the opportunity to learn the genuine facts about our world's history. 
As we reflect on these concerns, it raises questions about the impact of such historical manipulation on cultural heritage and the understanding of complex relationships between different communities. The deliberate alteration of historical narrative poses challenges to the pursuit of truth and the preservation of diverse cultural identities. This message underscores the importance of critical examination and preservation of authentic historical records to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the past for generations to come. If you'd like to support the channel, there are a few ways you can do so. All of the links will be found on my channel. We have Patreon, YouTube memberships, you can buy me a coffee, cash app, anything, or you can even send me a little thank you down below. If you don't fancy doing any of that, just a like and subscribe will keep us happy. And I hope to catch you on the next episode of Ancient Historia.